Hey everyone, welcome to MedKids Provider Spotlight where we're interviewing all providers from all over the United States. Um, really, really fascinating people have a very different niche, very, working on different things and helping people all across the United States. So today we have a really, really awesome guest, Kene Corder. Um, hi, welcome. Hey, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, we are so excited to have you on. We have, I know, kind of a lot to dive into and you do some very, very <laughs> interesting things that I think everyone's going to want to know about. So let's kind of dive in. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your story? What inspired you to open up your own practice and get into the mental health field? Well, I would say it's probably untraditional, I, I think, um, yeah. in the sense that I've always been an entrepreneur and, um, but I, I was one of those like jack of all trades. I had mastered some and when I master them, I get bored and I'm ready to move on. Yeah. So yeah. I started in the the beauty and the hair industry and um, shifted over to entertainment. And then from there went into finance and in finance, it was where I realized that that people have this longing to be happy. They have this longing to have more. And this longing is creating a lot of pain for them. And at the time, I had nothing to help them with. I was just watching them in pain until I went back to school, got my master's in clinical mental health therapy. And that's when I blended the background I had in finance with the training I had in mental health to create this private practice I have now that is peak performance and financial therapy put together. That's awesome. And I feel, I love what you said there because yeah, people, you know, when they hear about money or anything with finance, like more is more, you know, <laughs> and and but there there comes a lot of stress with more is more and wanting and you know I think that's so cool that you put those two you you caught that early like there is a clear correlation here between mm -hmm. how you feel and finance and yep. kind of yep. putting those worlds to make people free bur be burdened mm -hmm. you know lift lift that burden off of them so. How would you say that, you know, obviously this is very different, but your approach to actually how you work with your clients, how is that different? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we like to say that we are changing the way that mental health is viewed and administered. So one way is different. And, and I'm going to explain this by explaining the way that we work. But one way that is different is that we have a one set of clients that are actually our referral sources. And that set of clients is what we call a trusted advisor. And we support the trusted advisor. The trusted advisor is could be the doctor, or it could be the financial advisor. It could be the accountant, maybe even the agent, because we work on the other side with a lot of high achievers, investors, athletes, things like that. So on this side with the trusted advisor, we are training the trusted advisor to first take care of themselves, right? Put on their mask first before yeah. assisting others. And yeah. we're giving them training to take care of themselves, but we're also giving them some training so that they can give their clients the first kind of like the first set of, of therapy questions. We call them self-sync financial therapy questions. So they're self-sync therapy questions. We're giving them the first layer of those questions. We're training them to ask their clients these questions because we believe that the first therapist that people come to is not a mental health trained clinical mental health therapist. It's their bartender, it's their hairstylist, it's their financial advisor. That's the first therapist that they go to see. So we want to give them some training. And that's the first way we're different. The second way that we're different is that that trusted advisor eventually sees, okay, this is as far as I can take you. This is where I leave you. I need to refer you. You need therapy, but I need to refer you to a self-sync therapist. So then they refer the client to us and we take them further down the road. And we use the five-phase process, which is the vision phase, the clarity phase, the planning phase, 
the clearing phase, and then the expanding phase, which we can go deeper into those if you need to, but that's the, the easiest way to explain how we're different is that we have a step-by-step -step process, which for some people, it works really well because they love a step-by-step -step process, yeah. which other people, they're like, no, I want abstract. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I like the process, just me personally, but I think it's really great that you developed a clear cut way for people to be able to move forward. I think that's what you're getting at is that yep, this is what we can be successful time over time. Trust yep. the process. We're going to get you through it. You went through that first phase. You talked to your, that most trusted advisor in mm -hmm. your life, you know, the hairstylist or the financial advisor, you know, the people that you're you know, you can casually sit in the chair with and just lay it all out. But when exactly. You, when you kind of need to dig in deeper, you know, that's, I love that that's where you come in. You're like, I'm willing to take the challenge. I'm willing to break yep. this piece, you know, this onion open and peel it piece by piece. So what, what would you say is like, you know, do you have a lot of like misconceptions in terms of like what people think you do versus like what you actually do and you know if you, <laughs> you could tell anyone like I wish I wish you really knew this about my process like I really wish yeah you, like what would you say some of those things might be for you okay yeah so I'm like okay <laughs> let me see which ones I'm gonna tell you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the top 20 no <laughs> Okay, let me see. Maybe there are three that I can pull out that will be yeah. most powerful. Okay, so the first one, when people hear self-sync therapy, first of all, it's foreign, it's new. They don't know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But because the word self is in there, they know it has to do somewhat with them, set, with, with them right? Here's the thing, though. A lot of people come don't want to go to therapy because they think that the therapist is going to make them wrong. Like, like there's all these things wrong with you and, and now I'm gonna point them all out to you and then I'm gonna make you better. But self-sync therapy is not about that. It is about helping you see what society did to you. So when you hear those voices inside of you, those are not your voices. We are helping you sync with the real true voice inside of you. That voice that said, hey, I got an idea. And then those other voices says, you can't do that. You know, that's not you. The A lot of the industry teaches that those voices are your voice, but that's not your voice. So that's one misconception is that the therapist is going to make you wrong and point out all the things that's wrong with you. In fact, it's just the opposite. We're going to be looking for your strengths because deep down inside they're there. They've just been covered up with a whole bunch of crap. And the second thing, because we do financial therapy, a lot of times people think it's for, I don't know, a, a nicer way to say it, but for like, poor broke people. It's like, oh, my cousin, you know, is always broke or can't hardly ever keep a dollar. She needs financial therapy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not that kind of financial therapy. It, it's not financial literacy. Financial therapy is about reconciling your emotions around money. Now, all of us, whether we have a little money or a lot of money, have money emotions, but we haven't quite figured out how to reconcile them. And some of them are generationally passed down. So you may not even be able to do it on your own. And that's another, that's the third misconception is that sometimes people believe because there's, we're in this do it yourself world, they're like, oh, I could do this on my own. All I have to do is read a book. All I have to do is watch a YouTube video. All I have to do, you know, listen to a podcast. And, hmm, or like I said earlier, all I have to do is talk to my hairstylist. I go there every week. I can just talk, 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 talk my way out of this, right? No, you're just talking your way further in it. No action is being done. And that person is trained to listen but they're not trained with what the next step needs to be in order to help you heal. Because this is about healing. This is not about talking. It's not about pointing out what's wrong with you. It is about finding out what it will take for you to get to peak performance and your full financial potential and then doing that. And then what does it take to keep you on track? Because just because you figure out what to do doesn't mean you're always going to do it. Yes, I love how positive that is. You know, I didn't think about it. You know, a, a very easy tweak of a sentence is like, you know, we're here to figure out what's wrong with you. Like when you said that, mm -hmm. like how, you know, I'm like, oh, but then you're like, no, no, no. Like 
people have that. People know their strengths. You know, you are just clouded by societal like judgment or mm -hmm. the shoulds in life. This should <laughs> do, and then you know, you you hear things. You know, at, you talk about you know how things might be passed on from generation to generation, and that might be just instilled in you how you grew up. Your mom says, you know, watch how you spend this or how you do you know mm -hmm. how you do that, and so. But I love how how positive this is, and I think. I think that's the difference is that it's not like, let's just beat you down a little bit on right. like, you know, what, what you're not doing well, but it's more about like, okay, like I, I see the whole picture now and like you have it within you. I know mm -hmm. that you do, and I'm just here to pull it out. We're yes. Just pulling this out from you. Exactly. That's super cool. That's super <laughs> cool. Yeah. I love this. I love this. So how do you conduct your sessions with people? Is it in person, online? Is there any constraints on, you know, people that you can work with? Well, this is another place where we're different. So we start virtual and then we move into in-person. So in the beginning, a lot of times people, the first introduction they have to self-seek therapy is hearing me speak either on a podcast or at a conference, something like that. And then from there, they may book a, a introductory session or um, a one-time session. So once they have that one-time session with me, it will determine what to do next. I may say, I may refer them to another therapist based on what they have going on. Or I may say, yes, we can work together successfully. Or um, well, what's really going to happen next is Remember I said we have a five phase process. So if they hear me speak, typically at a conference, we're gonna go through the first phase, which is the vision phase. Then if they decide, oh my gosh, what this woman just said is exactly what I need. I need to take the next step. Then the next step is going to be the clarity session. And in the clarity phase, what we're finding out is where are you now? How the heck did you get there? And where is it that you really want to be? So, because <laughs> that's what we need to focus on. And so, but all of that happens either in the conference, right? That happens live. The 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 clarity session happens virtually. And then the next session, which is our planning session, because now that you have clarity, like I said earlier, now you're like, okay, okay, I know what I want, but how do I get there? So we've got to get you the how, because a lot of times people have the what when they come to me. And like you said, it's very deep down inside of them. And then we bring it out. Okay, now I got this what, what do I do with it? Well, we need you to have the how, because the how is the most important part of it. You know, you can have this vision, you can have this idea, but the execution has to come in there. So we create a clear plan that you can follow that goes along with your strengths. And now all of that happens virtually. And then this, the last two parts, which are the most powerful, are the clearing and the expanding. And that happens in a retreat. It's an in-person retreat. It's one person, one client, and me and a few other practitioners. And we pour into that one person with sometimes it's, you know, workouts with a personal trainer, stretching with a physical therapist. It can be massages, you know, with a massage therapist, sound healing, acupuncture, it just depends on what they need. But we design a treatment plan specific to them to help them clear all the trauma, all the mental injury out of their body, out of their brains. And then that creates a space for them to expand, expand to the next level because their peak performance is possible. There's just a lot of stuff in the way. So we're clearing that in the retreat. And then we're getting them to that place where they can expand because without the expansion, they're just going to stay in that same place. And that's why I say these are the most powerful parts. Those last two parts is clearing, clearing what's in, out, what's in the way out of the way and then expanding them so they can get to where they really want to be. I love that. I love when you take people up the mountain, right? And like just before they get to the peak, you're like, I'm going to bring in all these experts with me. Yes. In your success and dispel, you know, all the things that you, you are trying to get rid of all the things that we have worked on in our past sessions. And like, we're, we're bringing you to the mountaintop. And I think that's exactly. so cool that you, you look at it and you, and you treat it in that way. 
and how you bring other practitioners on board and you, you bring you look at the person and say i think this is what you need and yeah. I think it's really cool that you you bring other modalities into you know making this person whole making this person you know realize what's been within them all along and i think that's that's really important and so like what would you say to to folks that are watching here today that are like oh my god like their their brains are going off the fireworks are going and what are some like easy steps um that someone can take today that you know can help them on this journey that can mm -hmm. say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna take this one step today to improve my mental health i can take this one step today to improve my, you know, money, mental fitness, you know, like, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, what would mm -hmm. you say for some of those? I would say no matter where you're focusing. So usually when, when we ask the question, what is your idea of prosperity? People are going to name some kind of wealth, right? Some money. They're going to name some kind of health or well-being, some adventure and fun in their life. They're going to have some love and even a legacy that they wanna leave or a reputation that they can be proud of. And so no matter which area of your life you're working in, there are what we call the three A's to change. Now there are actually 10 steps to controlling the controllable, but the first three are the ones that people can always do on their own and come back to no matter what they're going through. And the first one is awareness. So if you don't even notice what's happening around you, then you're probably in pre-contemplation stage and you're not ready to do anything about it. But once you start getting that awareness where you're like, oh, wait, I noticed I made this decision. It didn't really work out for me. Oh, I said yes when I should have said no. And oh, I did this thing and it made me feel this way. And I don't really like that feeling, right? You start to oh, have some awareness. And then the second thing you have to do is find out what part you accept. Okay. I did say those things, but I really meant them. And that's how I want to be known as a person that is willing to say the hard stuff, right? Or I did say those things. I didn't really mean them. I shouldn't say stuff like that. I need to change that, right? So now you have to separate. What do I want to change? And once you separate, this is what I accept. This is what I need to. The last A is adjust. This is what I need to adjust. Now, this is where the work comes in because some of those adjustments you won't be able to make on your own. You'll be able to do them to a certain extent on your own, but that's where self-seek therapy comes in because some of the changes are so deeply ingrained in you. They're so habitual that if you try to do them on your own, what will likely happen is because the awareness comes, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to kind of drop the mic right here because people are going to be like, oh shoot, that's me. <laughs> so you're going to get that awareness, right? And the universe is going to be like, here's a little pebble. It's time to do some changing. And then you're like, yep, I see that. I accept that change, but I'm not ready to do it. So they're like, oh, here goes a little rock. We'll go just tap on your window a little bit harder. And then you're like, yeah, I know. I need to do something different. I've been meaning to, but I can't, I'm busy right now. Brick right through your window, crash. Oh shoot, that hurt. I think that hit me on my head, but it didn't hurt that bad. I'm gonna keep going. I know I can push through this. I can white knuckle this. I can, I can grin and bury this, you know, like grin and bear this. Just keep pushing through and keep pushing, especially the strong people, right? The ones who are usually the ones that everybody goes through. You're strong. You can carry everybody's burden. <laughs> you don't need any help. Keep pushing. You can do this, right? You're just going to keep going. That physical strength that you have, that even that mental strength that you have, is getting in the way of you getting to your best self. And so then finally, the boulder comes rolling down <laughs> on top of you and you're like, okay, I'll do something now because <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> Your body will start breaking down. You'll lose sleep. You, I mean, you'll be, you won't even recognize yourself anymore. Yeah. And the parts you do recognize, you probably won't like. So then it'll be time to do something. And so I, I like to tell people, when they start to get the awareness, that's because you you are ready. You're ready, but you can wait if you want to. It's only going to get worse, harder. And when it's time to make those adjustments, they'll be really ingrained in you so much that it's going to take a catastrophic event for you to make that change. And you don't want to wait for that catastrophic event because those are really the only three ways you're going to change 
is time and repetition. Like you just really will yourself to change, which takes a long time. Um, that catastrophic event or something like self sync therapy, it creates a catastrophic event, but in a much more gentle way. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I mean, that vision of people going down that road and it getting progressively worse. <laughs> I think we can all think about a time where the boulder came through our window yep. and we were like, well, shoot, here it is. And now I got to do something about it. But what if we didn't have to wait, right? What if, I know you're like, if I could tell every damn client, um, but what if we really didn't have to wait? What if we could wake up and say, yep, I'm going to take control of this right now. I'm at, oh. I'm at the pebble stage, Maybe <laughs> I'm even at the brick stage, right? Right. Um, but before that boulder comes down the mountain and into my house, maybe, maybe we can take a step forward. So I think yeah. maybe for the people listening is that he heed the caution and heed the warning and, yeah. you know, think about what stage you're in and maybe make that step forward now as opposed to later. And so I really love that you put that out there, um, to the world. And, and before we wrap up today, um, mm -hmm. just because that was a total mic drop. You were right. I mean, <laughs> you, you absolutely nailed that. Tell everyone now, cause they're like, how do I talk to Ken A? Like right now, where, what's that first step? So why don't you tell everyone how folks can find you? They can learn more about you. They can follow you on social. Give us, give us all the goodies. Give us all the goodies. Okay. Absolutely. So I like to break it down to a couple of ways. So if you just want free resources, if you're like, I like what she's saying, but I want to get to know her a little better, then social is the way to go. I'm typically on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So you can follow me on all of the in all of those places. And another free resource, I have a free community. If you go to my Instagram, there is a link in there. And most of my posts have a link to my free community. Um, it, I also give, um, I'll give you a link if you want to put it in the description of the video. And so you can click on that link. It'll take you to the free community. This community, I do free therapy in it at least twice a week, sometimes more if I feel like it. Um, but that's one way to say, oh yeah, this is for me. And then you can take the next step, which if you go to our website, that's where the steps really begin. And so if when you go to our website, which is presidentiallifestyle.com, you're going to see a couple options. One option is going to be if you are a trusted advisor, then you need to go ahead and jump into our trusted advisor um, community or path, you know, track. And the next, what you'll see is going to say athletes, because that's who I work with most. If you're not an athlete, you can still get help, but I'm just telling you, that's who I work with most. So you can imagine how fast, how strong, and how much we're going to be working together. This is not baby steps. This is like, let's do it. <laughs> and then the last option you'll see is to hire me to speak. So that's what you'll see on our website. But all of those are paid options. Those are not free options. Awesome. This has been amazing. So many different light bulbs, I'm sure, went off for everyone like they did for me. And like Ken, I said, there's so many ways to reach out to her, to follow her. Please do so. We'll add some of those little nuggets in our description. So feel free to click on them. And Ken, I, thanks yes. for joining us. You are amazing. You, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. Same here. Hope to have you on again soon.